been a heathen all his life, never knew Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, he hates Christianity. And, of course, <laughs> Christianity being what it is in the United States of today, I just don't blame him. Okay? I sympathize with the man. Anyway, he's uh, 70 some odd years old, got macular degeneration and cataracts, and he's legally blind. He had to give up his driver's license and he lives alone. And the only way he's got to get around is either to walk or to ride on a golf cart that he bought. A golf cart. That's what the man relies on. A golf cart. He relies on that thing, too. He goes uptown and gets his groceries. Without that golf cart, he has to rely on someone else. And he loves his liberty. He doesn't want to be beholden to anyone. He wants to be self-sufficient, even in his blinded state, for as long as it lasts, what little sight he's got left, he wants to maintain liberty. Now, i got to love the one, myself who understands now for the first time in my life the law of liberty. i got to admire that pagan, godless heathen who wants to maintain liberty in his life. So I thought, how can I help this man and tell him about the law of liberty? Well, his golf cart broke broke down. He couldn't get around. He was blind. And I'm thinking, that golf cart's got a two-stroke engine in it, and I can tear one down and put it back together with my eyes closed. I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to fix that old man's golf cart for him, his golf cart for him. And then I'm going to teach him about the law of liberty. He loves his liberty so much, I'm going to make him appreciate his liberty more than he ever has in his life. So I went over there, and I tore the fuel pump apart, Turns out that he used gasohol in an old golf cart before gasohol was cool, and it ruined all the components inside the fuel pump. It wasn't pumping fuel. And I thought, well, he's burnt gasohol in this thing. It's probably destroyed the carburetor, and it's probably destroyed the seals in the crankcase, and I'm going to have to tear this engine completely apart and fix it. But I can do it, and I will do it, and I will do it for free just like Jesus who came and redeemed me for free. That's how I'm going to witness the gospel truth, the law of liberty, to that godless old man. So I went over and I said, neighbor, I'm going to help you. I can tear that engine down I can tear down every component in that golf cart and make it run as good as new. 
and I won't charge you a dime, not one thin dime. And the only cost you'll incur is the cost of the parts, and they've got to be cheap as dirt. And I'll have you up and running in no time. So he says, well, boy, you come at the right time because I can't see to fix this thing. I don't even know what's wrong with it. I've never worked on an engine like this, and I don't have a clue where to start even if I could see. And I said, stand back. And I started in on that baby, and I had her running like a brand new one. And he was so thankful that he said, I'm going to come over and there's whenever you get ready to pick up all that firewood, you cut down them trees and sawed it all up, work your fingers to the bone, all by yourself, no help. I'm going to come over to help you. I didn't say too much. As time went on, he kept offering. When are you going to pick up that firewood? I'll come over and help you. And I says, neighbor, you don't owe me anything. What I did for you was free out of the goodness of my heart. It was a gift. Now, if I were to hand you a gift, out of the goodness of my heart, hand you a gift, what would you do if you reached down in your pocket to pay me for it, to recompense me for it in some fashion, whether by money or labor? It's no longer a gift, is it? He said, no, I reckon not. No, it wouldn't any longer be a gift out of the goodness of my heart. That's bad enough, but what's even worse, you rob from me the blessing of giving out of the goodness of my heart. And let me tell you what's even worse than that. Jesus Christ is the rewarder of the saints. Jesus Christ is the rewarder of the saints. And if I have any reward coming for the goodness of my heart to help an old man, then it should come from Christ and not you. Because I want you to be free, neighbor. I want you to be able to get on that golf cart and rip and tear up and down the streets. Go get your go get your groceries. Go to the doctor. Do whatever you can. It just thrills my heart to see an old man who loves his liberty enough to go running up and down the streets in a golf cart. And there's nothing more in this world than I love than to be blessed and rewarded by my Savior. You steal from me that reward if I were to accept payment. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Let me tell you something, neighbor. If this whole world understood and knew the law of liberty, do you know none of us would be in debt? He thought for a moment, and I saw the light come on in his eyes. Do you realize the government comes here? the federal government, the state government, the county government, even the city local government comes to say, we want to help you. We want to help you. And you stick out your hand and you take it. But when you do, you find yourself with Roman chains. No longer are you free to think and say what you feel in your heart. No longer can you do with your property as you please. You have to abide by federal, state, local, county, government rules and regulations. You have to pay taxes on that land to the tune of at least three or four hours of your work day to pay for that help that they give you. Well, let me tell you, neighbor, I'm not like the federal government. I'm not like the state government. I'm not like the county government. And I'm not like the municipal government. When I give, I give freely because I receive freely from Jesus, the rewarder of the saints. And now for the first time in your life, old man, you've seen Christ. Do you still 
hated. Do you still resent him? Or do you want to be like him? I want to be like him. I said, so you get on your golf cart and be free. No obligation. You owe me nothing but to get on that golf cart and rip tear up and down the streets. And he looked at me and he said, well, I'd still like to help you pick up that firewood. And I said, then, only according to the law of liberty. Do it out of the goodness of your heart. Hold me no charge. He said, that's the way we'll do it. Oh, no man, anything. That's the law of liberty. Because if you owe a man anything, he will make you a slave. He's got a claim on your life. And he will use that claim to corrupt your morals. And that's what Rome has done. Rome has done it directly and indirectly through the civil governments. Federal, state, county, and local governments. They've even done it through your 501c3 churches. You walk in, what's the preacher say? You got the gospel today. If God has blessed you, then you owe me. And you pay me in tithes 10%. You want to get rich? You got to pay me. I'm the priest. See, they built our churches, our Protestant churches, after the very image of Rome. You want to be rich? We want to help you. We'll give you the gospel. You give us our, your money, and then we'll give your money to the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, the ecumenical movement. We'll be able to make more movies like the Left Behind series that will lead you into the pits of hell, that will convince you the Pope is not the Antichrist, that he's some fool that looks like Mitt Romney, some temple grade Mitt Romney that will show up about seven years before Jesus Christ returns, and uh, then you'll have your Antichrist. But in the meantime, we are the shepherds, and we will hit you. We must start at the foot of the cross. For our souls in danger, we're at loss. And when we kneel in that awesome place, at that very moment, you'll feel God's grace. Friend, let me tell you, you need to know, there is heaven, also hell below. Christ died on that cross to set you free from your vile sins and hell's agony. God's enemy without the cross. Reject Christ and to God your dross. To the prison of hell he will send just Christ's work on the cross makes amends. God hates those who try to enter in the gates of heaven still full of sin. Only his son can take sin away go to the foot of the cross this day. God has provided only one way to enter heaven's wondrous array. Except what Jesus did for us all, he paid our debt so hell won't befall. Go to the foot of the cross this day, his precious blood washes sin away. We each need to think more of his cross, without our Savior we're total loss.